Uh, Ian and I were just talking on the break. E, Jags had, I don't know, roughly like $11 million in cap space, something right. like that. I'm, I'm, I was uh, 11 or 14 or something. I like think that. it was like 11 okay. in what they call effective cap space, whatever. Uh, it, it was in the low, what would that be, low eight figures, right? Can, can I get some low eight figures, okay, please? You know? <laughs> but um, you got to wonder what the contract will look like for Brandon McManus. His last deal um, – he signed a four-year, $17 million contract, Ooh. okay? Uh, so this is a guy who – now, it, it's funny because you look at uh, – here he is. Four-year, $17 million contract uh, in 20 – when was this? Uh, in the early 2020s, that included a $2.5 million signing bonus alone. Um, nine and a half of it was guaranteed – Average annual salary of 4.3, so his cap hit was even higher than that because you had the prorated portion of the signing bonus. You compare that to what Riley Patterson made last year, his base salary was $825,000. That's good money, but it's not a massive cap hit for you, so you got to figure, and with the timing of this, they didn't sign Brandon McManus on spec, okay? They didn't say, hey, Come in and compete. Be a camp leg. If it works out, great. Brandon McMahon has been around, and I think to get him, they said, look, you come in. We're going to assume you're our kicker, and there's probably some, I'm guessing, some level of guaranteed money in their form because they immediately then waive Riley Patterson. And I'm not even saying it's the wrong move. I, I hope it works out fantastic. And there are very few sacred cows, right? There are very few guys that are untouchable that if you feel like you can upgrade from, you upgrade on those guys. Like, Trevor Lawrence, I mean, how many guys could you possibly feel like you could upgrade from, right? It's it's silly to even think about yeah. it, right? You're in the ground floor of greatness, you hope. But Riley Patterson's a good kicker. He was very accurate last year in the role they asked him to perform. They didn't ask him to kick the long ones very often. But he came through in the clutch, was really good down the stretch, but clearly the Jags, I think, like you were saying, you want to, you know, you can't score a touchdown every time. Right, you got to extend that scoring range out, and now honestly, you get to the opponent's thirty-five yard line. You add what, what is that? A fifty-three yard field goal. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's field. That's not even think about rolling McManus out there. There's no pooch punting. There's no should we go for it on fourth and six here? I mean, you might go for it on fourth and six depending on the circumstance, but you're going to roll him out very comfortably. And you know, several people pointed out, and we made the point as well. He kicked at altitude. That helps. But his career long came on the road. This guy's got a big leg. He's kicked 40 field goals of 50 or more yards successfully in his career. So, you know, welcome to Jacksonville, and I hope it's the right move. And that also it brings another question when you bring up the money. How much is this going to affect us getting that veteran pass rush? Well, that's that we the want? whole thing, right? How, what's left over, yeah. right? What's left over? And, and again, it, we don't I, – as of this moment, I don't know if it's a multi-year deal. Mm-hmm. Is it a one-year deal? whatever, and if it's, you know, even anything more than a year, you can fudge the cap numbers around and, and leave yourself some extra room. You know, Doug Peterson has been pretty much down the line that it doesn't seem like he is desperate to add a veteran pass rusher it don't seem to this like team, it. It right? It does not seem like it. And, I mean, you do the two pri- – again, whoever you bring in, if you were to bring in somebody, has to accept a coming-off-the-bench kind of role. And a lot of the guys, you know, some of the guys that we talked about a lot this offseason fit that category. And some, I think, still are probably looking at themselves as full-time starters and are waiting for the right opportunity if it comes in training camp due to an injury or whatever the case. So, uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed, you know, a listen to the downtrodden today uh, compared to the Jaguars. At least we hope that it'll play out that way. But, E, uh, I'll let you vote first here. Which team – will be the worst in the AFC South this season. It's a three-team choice you have. You know who they are. Who do you say? I'm going with the Texans. You are? Yeah. Okay. I just think that they have a longer climb uphill. Um, Yeah, they got a new quarterback, obviously, and I think that's probably why the Titans are the strongest because they have a quarterback, although Tannehill really ain't all that. They're our biggest biggest rivals, the Titans. So uh, I believe that – the, the Texans have a, a, a larger climb uphill due to all the rookies and everybody who they're expecting to play a role. I think it's, it's hard for me to vote for the Titans, even though I think you can make the argument. Like, 
there are a lot of questions about that offensive line. There really are. And you look at some, like when you look at elite talent, we talked about Indy's got a handful of really elite players yeah, they do. that had down seasons due to injury or whatever factors, and they're still young enough that you think they can still recapture that prime. You look at Houston, and they brought in, you know, some sneaky veteran players, and John Harris mentioned a few of them. Sheldon Rankins up front is a good player. Uh, it, Jimmy Ward at, from San Francisco is a good safety. Denzel Perryman, is when he can stay healthy, is a ball hawking, like a, a tackling machine of a linebacker. You know, so they've done that a little bit. Uh, they've got some young first-round picks that may come into maturity. I, I'm, I'm really on the fence, but I'm going to say it's the Colts. Honestly, because I think there are more questions to me about Anthony Richardson's quick assimilation to the National Football League. Maybe I'll look like a fool when it's all said and done. I think C.J. Stroud's a little going to turn out to be a little bit more game ready to go from day one when when the dust settles, and you can say, well, they've got Minshew there, but you know, the last time Minshew was a starter, the Jags earned the number one pick in the draft. Let's not forget, and Minshew's a fun story. He is, he's a I think one I, an, a wonderful backup to have on your team, I wouldn't want to cast my lot with him as my full-time guy, you know? And uh, so I'll say the Colts uh, for myself. Here's how the poll has gone. It's fairly close. Uh, Texans at 40.5%, Colts at 33.8%, and Tennessee getting 25.7% of the vote. That might There might be some hate votes going in there, I have a feeling, uh, with that one. So uh, that's your Chad and Sandy Real Estate question of the day. Chad and Sandy Real Estate, they – I guarantee you multiple offers on your home in three days or they'll sell it for free. Visit them online at chadandsandy.com. And I got to say, the lobster, as we call it in my household, right, uh, Red Lobster, has made a comeback here. Oh, yeah? These polls usually, after about 150 votes in, don't change that much. And at that point, you know, we asked you today, what are your thoughts about Red Lobster? If you don't like seafood at all or you're allergic in the case of E.T., don't vote in the poll, right? But, if you, you know, if you like seafood, what do you think? Do you love it? Do you like it okay? Nah. Or, man, get the beep out of here, okay? And early on, it was like love it was like 4% and like it okay was like 30-something percent. But now love it's at 11, like it okay is at 42.7, so – the majority of people are saying they at least like it okay. I'd put myself in the top end of like it okay. I wouldn't – I mean, I don't love it. It's not like my favorite restaurant, but, like, I've never turned down, hey, you want to go to Red Lobster? Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, want to go to Red Lobster. So, uh, I like Red Lobster. I like it quite a bit. I might be leaning more in the love it category. Uh, 27% say nah, and man, get the bleep out of here is at about 19% of the votes.